So let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little occult chat. This is your host, The Occult View. So um, it's a whole lot going on. I, I just wanted to come through and talk about a few things that are going on that I've seen that were interesting to me. Um, the first thing is the film, I think he was a filmmaker, Morgan Spurlock. He did a documentary back in 2004 called Supersize Me. And he recently passed away at the age of 53. And they said he passed away from um, cancer. And he basically, back in 2004, I believe he, um, what did he do? He ate at McDonald's for like a month to prove how unhealthy um, fast food is or was or whatever the case may be. Here is where I'm at with it. He died at the age of 53. Now, here, he is supposed to be the epitome of health. And he was trying to show people how eating at fast food restaurants were so bad for people, which I'm not saying he was right. I'm not saying he was wrong, you know. But here's my whole thing. Why do people always think that they can tell people what to eat, who to sleep with, <laughs> what to do? See, that's where my mind goes, because as an occultist, I look at the control and I look at the subliminal programming. That is what I see. If people want to eat at McDonald's, let them eat at McDonald's. McDonald's is a restaurant that serves food. Fast food for when you don't want to cook for your family. If there are people who don't ever want to cook, that's their prerogative. It's just very telling when you have individuals like this. And now, and now he has passed away. And it's always these types of people who claim to be so in tune with health. It seems to be always these types of people who end up expiring. And that's no shade or no read, but I'm just pointing it out. And I'm not saying that McDonald's is healthy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm not saying that McDonald's is healthy. What I am saying is, is that I should have a choice. People should have a choice without being shamed, without being attacked, and without being fear mongered by people like that. If they want to eat at McDonald's, if you want to get you a burger and some fries and a shake at McDonald's every now and then, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm not saying that you should go and buy 10 and 20 burgers. Hell no. Now, me personally, I don't eat at McDonald's. I cook my own food. But I don't think there's anything wrong with people that do want to eat at McDonald's. Now, I get it. People say McDonald's is fake food and they've come up with all of these different fear mongering things. Same thing they did with pork. For example, I don't particularly care for chitterlings. I don't particularly care for pig feet. I've had pig feet in the past. I've had chitterlings in the past. It's nothing wrong with if people want to eat them. I'm sure if they're cooked right, they probably taste good to people. And there's nothing wrong with people who want to eat those things. It's nothing wrong with it. That's just like I like turkey tail. That's called that's the butt of the turkey. It has a lot of meat on it. I like putting that in beans, like if I'm making black eyed peas or great northern beans or even string beans or any vegetable, you can put a piece of turkey butt in that. It has a lot of meat on it and some fat. It's good. OK, it's good. It is really good. But people like what they like. And now he's dead at 53 trying to prove where he was trying to prove all those years ago that eating now he ate for a month out of McDonald's to prove a point. And I think he said his cholesterol went up and stuff like that after eating at McDonald's for a month to prove a point of how unhealthy that it was. And 
I'm not looking at the food. I'm looking at the mechanism, the sub, the subliminal mechanism of it and how people's minds have been programmed. And what people don't understand when your mind is programmed by people like this. And not just him, but people like that, when your mind gets programmed by people like that, it can create a change in your inside of you. Let me just say that. It can create unwanted change because they're programming your subliminal, your sub, your subconscious to be in fear. People have been eating from McDonald's for years. And I actually had forgotten all about this guy. I, I don't, I don't remember him verbatim, but wait a minute, let me put my I don't remember him verbatim, but I do remember him vaguely. People have been eating from McDonald's. Now, me personally, for some of you youngsters, you may not remember, but I was a Roy Rogers fan. The restaurant. Roy Rogers used to have the best fried chicken. They sold the best burgers, French fries, and they had a salad bar to die for. But they, you know, Roy Rogers could not compete with McDonald's. And I do think they still do have pockets of Roy Rogers, you know, around the um, around the country in certain places. I know they have them in Delaware and way, way out in Maryland. And some far out places in Maryland, they still have Roy Rogers. But Roy Rogers is not around the way it's not it's not around like it used to be. It used to be one right up there on Georgia Avenue right across the street from Piney Branch Road. You know, because that's where I was raised at. But these places have been around for a long time. They've been around for a long time. Um, McDonald's, Roy Rogers, these places have been around for a long time. Anyone knows that if you eat from those places every day, that's not the, the healthiest. You know what I'm saying? Anyone knows that. But these people, they take it too far. It's a control thing. It's the same thing with the veganism movement. Movement, Excuse me. It's a control thing. Because you don't like something, you don't get to dictate what other people like. Unless they're your children. We're not your fucking children. And I think as true occultists, we need to pay attention to, you know, the past and as to why we're in the predicament that we're in now. So he did this documentary, what, 20 some years ago? In the early 2000s, early 2000s, people were living their lives. Wasn't no whole bunch of shit going on. It was some shit going on, but it wasn't a whole lot of shit going on. Now, here we are. 20 years later, people don't, people don't think for themselves. All of these different illnesses are popping up. All of these things are, are happening before our eyes. And we, we, we think it's this, but it's really that over here. This man programmed people with fear. People were eating at McDonald's happy, you know, eat at McDonald's maybe once a week. And going on about their business. Then he comes along, which was probably inspired by institutionalized backing. He comes along and starts talking about, oh, people shouldn't eat from McDonald's because it's unhealthy. But in actuality, whatever whatever was going on with him was at was actually worse than people eating at McDonald's. I know an old lady right now. She ate at McDonald's every day and she in her late 80s, child. She ate at McDonald's. She eats at McDonald's every day. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. And I'm not defending. Let me be clear about something. 
I'm not defending McDonald's, the corporation. I'm defending the people's right as an as a sovereign individual, as an adult, to make decisions for themselves. If you want to eat at McDonald's, nobody should tell you, oh, that's unhealthy and that's wrong. Because again, this man just died at 53. So evidently, whatever he was doing or not doing, it was not working. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. It was not working. And I'm not and I'm not making fun of that. Now, let me be clear about that. But I'm pointing out how people with that mentality. They want to tell you what you should eat, what you should drink, how you should dress and what you should do. They want to tell you all of these things to get you up under some type of control and to make you and, and to control you with fear based with fear based subliminal programming McDonald's is going to always be around people are always going to enjoy McDonald's and like I said I don't really eat from McDonald's I haven't eaten from McDonald's in in years and if I did get something from McDonald's it would probably be just like a chicken sandwich or something like that because I don't really like you know, their burgers or anything like that. But I don't I don't eat from McDonald's like that. But there's nothing wrong with getting you some food from McDonald's if you want to every now and then. If it's fake food, it's fake food. If it's fake food, it's fake food. But to, to a lot of people, it tastes good. There's nothing wrong with getting a cheeseburger and a milkshake and some fries from McDonald's every now and then. It's nothing wrong with that. But these people want to create this fear-based society where they tell you what they want you to eat, who they want you to be attracted to. It all goes, it, it, it really goes back to everything across the board as it pertains to control. It's all about control. It's all about control. And this is nothing against Morgan Spurlock. This is nothing against him personally. I mean, he was just a pawn in a water full of sharks. But when you really look at it, it's all about control and telling you what you should and should not do. And truthfully, it even goes beyond, like I said earlier, it goes beyond McDonald's and what you're eating. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond all of that. It's about people trying to control and manipulate your energy and trying to tell you what to do, what to believe. The same thing that religion does. It's the same thing that cults do. So for me, when they brought up that he died, it's just a reminder as to why we live in the society that we live in now because people think they have the right to try to manipulate and program you. They think they have the right to program your subconscious in whatever fashion that they want so they can control you. They think they have a right to instill fear inside of you like the church does. Telling you when you die, you're going to go to hell if you don't submit and be obedient to God and Christ. You're going to go to hell and be tormented forever and ever. This is what these people do. So it's bigger than the documentary that came out 20 years ago. It's just about control and manipulation and mind control. Nobody has to eat at McDonald's. McDonald's is not forcing anybody to eat at their restaurants. I don't care how many. Uh, com now, McDonald's does use a form of subliminal programming themselves to try to entice and seduce people. They use marketing techniques, which can be, you know, rooted in, you know, um, I guess you could say the occult, 
with certain colors and stuff like that. I understand that. But if you have a strong mind and you're really not into McDonald's, there is no amount of subliminal um, programming in that way that can make you eat at a place if you don't want to eat at that place. You know, there's just no, there's no, no, there's no way that it's going to penetrate if you have a strong mind. But sometimes, and, and this is another thing. This is another thing. People forget. We are human beings having a human experience. Let me tell you this. If there was, if there was ever any type of world catastrophe on a global level, and they said the only place you can eat is McDonald's, you better believe that all of these types of people like the Morgan Spurlocks and all of these other type of people who claim that they're this and that, that don't eat this and that, you better believe their asses are going to be eating at McDonald's too, like the rest of us. Okay? They're going to be eating at McDonald's too. It is nothing wrong with having a burger and a fries and a soda and a milkshake from time to time. It is nothing wrong with that. And people should not be fear mongered and shamed for that. To me, that is abuse. Now, it makes me wonder, was he sitting back just watching people? Oh, no, he got paid for this. Because this is another way to mind control people for bigger agendas. See, that's what I'm talking about, the bigger picture. This is a way for people to be up under even more control. See, it started out with something small like this 20 years ago. People thought it was fun and funny or whatever the case may be. But here we are now in 2024, and we really can look around and see the result of what he participated in on a larger scale because so many people are up under so much mind control and that's what it was really all about that's what it was really all about putting you up under mind control so you can be obedient to this system that we live in nobody's going to tell me where i can and cannot eat or where i should and should or where I should and should not eat. Nobody's going to tell me that. Nobody's going to do that. Now, again, I don't really fool with McDonald's. You know, I don't eat their food like that. But I'm not going to tell other people that you shouldn't eat McDonald's because of X, Y, and Z. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. If they want to eat McDonald's, if that gives them enjoyment, let them do it. It's not my place to tell people what they should and should not do in their lives, especially adults. If they're not my children, I don't have anything to do with that. I don't have children. And nobody's going to put me in the child position. I do what the fuck I want to do. If I'm not hurting anyone else, if I'm not hurting you, then what I do should not matter to you. And there are so many things that are going on in this world. And there were so many things that were going on in the world even back then. Maybe not as much as it is now, but there were so many things. I actually, 2004, yeah, there was a lot of things going on in the world then too. A whole lot. But maybe it's just it wasn't just it was it just back then because we really didn't have social media. We weren't aware of a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So we in 2024. That was in 2004. And look at the world now. Look at the world now. On a side note, did y'all hear about Sean Kingston and his mother? 
that they allegedly stole more than $1 million through some type of fraud and they locked him and his mother up? <laughs> I saw someone post in the comments of that video where they were reporting on that and they were saying that this has been a bad year basically for black entertainers. And you know what? That person is absolutely right. It has been a bad year for a lot of black entertainers. Do I believe that Puff Daddy's, because um, I haven't talked on it, do I believe that his apology was sincere? No. No, I do not. I don't think that that man has a sincere bone in his body. I do not think he's the devil. I don't think that he's a demon. I just think I just think that he's just a very disgusting human being of the lowest frequency in order for you to be uh, deemed a something spiritual like a demon or a devil. You have to have a certain amount of depth and a certain amount of hierarchy. He has none. For those who know, you know. For those who don't, you don't know. He has none of those things. He is just a low vibrating entity who has been allowed, like the Morgan Spurlocks, who has been allowed to infiltrate our culture with his lies, his deception, and his subliminal fear-mongering tactics. Remember, he's brother love. He's brother love, remember? That's what Puff Daddy used to call himself, brother love. <laughs> But you know what the interesting thing is? He is still walking around free. He is still walking around free. And it really goes to show you that when you have enough money, You can pay for anything. You can even pay to cover up your crimes. He's still walking around free. He has not been arrested. And for at least almost 30 years, maybe a little more, <laughs> he has really manipulated and he has infiltrated the culture and ever since and I'm going to keep saying this ever since he came on the scene I noticed a downward spiral within the art of music he turned music into a ghetto, especially for, for black people. He turned it into a ghetto, ratchet, bottomless pit that really had no purpose. Because at, back in the day, black men used to use their artistry of rap like Tupac to tell a story. That was his way of telling a story about living in the ghetto and the challenges that came along with that. And you had compassion for that. It had soul to it. When P. Diddy came on the scene, it seemed like that artistry went down the tubes. And then he creates a caricature like Saucy Santana. And then they say that that is the representation for gay black men. No, it's not. No, it's not. That may be their representation, but it most certainly is not mine. He does not represent me. I'm older than that young man, number one. He does not represent me. But this is another prime example. And I know people may not be able to see it, but this also connects to the Morgan Spurlock effect. When he did that documentary on how unhealthy McDonald's is, 
that was another way of telling people, hey, listen, I am going to force this on you. I'm going to force you to listen to me. I'm going to force these ideologies on you. I'm going to do all of these things to force you into a, 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 a position of fear and submission. So you won't eat at McDonald's anymore and you won't enjoy anything anymore. So to me, it wasn't about health. It was about control. Same thing with P. Diddy introducing Saucy Santana to us because Saucy Santana came from the school of P. Diddy. He came from P. Diddy's camp. P. Diddy created that. But these people try to force things upon us that we don't necessarily want. What happened to little Nas X? There are a lot of people that you just don't see anymore. You don't see little Nas X anymore. You don't see Pete Davidson anymore. You don't hear anything about him anymore ever since he broke up, ever since he broke up with that that woman, what's her name? Kim K. You don't hear anything about him anymore. Um, who else has disappeared? It's a lot of celebrities you don't hear anything from anymore. And they disappeared relatively in a short period of time. You know, I went back and I listened to that interview that Monique did on Club Shay Shay where she was talking about how Kevin Hart ghosted her because it recently came back up in the algorithm because Chelsea Chelsea Handler brought it back up in some roast or something like that. <laughs> and I really went back and I listened to that, right? I went back to Club Shay Shay and listened to the um, the part where Monique was talking about Kevin um, Hart and how he ghosted her and everything. And I don't think what, Mo what Monique doesn't understand is this. What she doesn't really understand is this. I don't think Kevin Hart ghosted her because he wanted to. Somebody told him you better ghost her. Somebody threatened him. Somebody told him, you better ghost her. You better not work with her. You better not give her no opportunities. See, this is all part of control. Go back to what I said about the documentary about McDonald's with, with, uh, with what's his name? Morgan Spurlock. Remember, it's about control. Telling people who to like, who to deal with, who to dislike. Kevin Hart did not dissociate from Monique because he wanted to. He did that because he was ordered to do that by his handlers and his gatekeepers, if you call it that, if you can call it that. Because we live in a world of control. We live in a world of control. <laughs> it's the same thing that's going on with Wendy Williams right now. That woman that's supposed to be her guardian, that's who she's up on. That, Wendy is up under that woman's control. Because that's the type of world that we're, that we're living in now where people tell you what you can do they try to tell you what you can make. They try to take things away from you that don't belong to them. They want to take your money. They want to take your property. And they basically want you to beg them. They want, well, they want to put you in a position, in a servitude, in a position of servitude. This is why I'm finding now a lot of these homes, you be thinking that these homes and condos are owned by individuals 
but they're actually owned by LLCs, even this building that I live in. This building that I live in is owned by an LLC. And when it's owned by an LLC, there is an element of control that they try to have over their tenants because you can't really go to an individual person. They hide behind LLCs because that gives them more illusionary control or more control. Fuck the illusionary. So going back to that McDonald's guy, filmmaker Morgan Spurlock, who did the documentary on McDonald's, was it worth it? And was it effective? Because McDonald's is still here. People are still eating from McDonald's. People that are older than him who've been eating from McDonald's, but he's no longer here. And I don't say that to be insensitive. I'm saying that because it's a fact. He's no longer here. He died at the tender age of 53. <sighs> so what's really going on? What's really going on? Anyway, I just wanted to come through with that tidbit. You know, I, I don't want to stay too long, but that's just my take on it. You know, I know I haven't made a video in a while because I am busy. I have some some things that are, you know, trying to come to fruition. I'm not going to talk about it on here, um, but I got some things, some projects in the work and I'm looking forward to that. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And that's all I'm going to say on that. And I'll, you know, when it comes to fruition, I might tell people over here. I don't know. It just depends on how I feel about it. I got to see how it works out. But I have some things that, you know, um, that may be coming to fruition. And let me say this before I go. Um, nobody ever really dies. Spirit is real. And Even though you may have had a contentious relationship with someone who may have crossed over. Sometimes when those people, when they've done you wrong, they will come back in another form to try to make things right. They will try to come back in, in another form and try to make things right because something happened. I have an opportunity and I'm not going to talk about it too much, but something happened where someone who transitioned their influence is coming that I had a contentious issue with their influence is trying to make things right for me. So sometimes they do come back as in that Stephen King movie, but not with the spookism of it. But sometimes they do come back. And that person that I'm referring to, I'm not going to mention his name. Some of you all may know who I'm talking about. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't showed up. He didn't showed up. And his spirit is working with me. And I didn't have to ask. I didn't have to ask. But I pulled my cards and I saw what I saw. Anyway, I got to go. This is the occult view.